Hello everybody, this is Zanaris, and this is going to be the first in a series of videos that will help you get accustomed to the Galaxy Editor. Uh, this is the editor that does come with StarCraft II Wings of Liberty that lets you create both melee and use map settings custom maps. And before we get started with the actual creation of the maps and whatnot, I want to go over a couple things. Number one, we're going to first cover the absolute basics of the StarCraft II map editor. Uh, what's in the menus, what they do, what the, the functions are, etc. Uh, after that, we're going to go over a little bit of stuff that you need to do before you create a map. You know, it can be fun to get in here and kind of doodle around and see what stuff does and whatnot. But once you're once you're done with that, you're going to want to really sit down and you know, if you want to make a project, you've got to. Um, do a couple things, keep a couple things in mind, you know, draw some plans out. Generally, we'll just go over the stuff that you need to take into consideration when creating a map. For now, let's go ahead and uh, let's get the program started on your computer if you have not already. Go ahead and click your Start button. Go to All Programs, StarCraft 2, StarCraft 2 Map Editor. And uh, if you're using Windows XP, those directions will vary just a little bit. Uh, same for Macintosh, but uh, unfortunately I do not have a Macintosh, so I do not have the specific directions for you to find it. If you need help finding it, go ahead and uh, use our good friend Google. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, guess that you've got that loaded up now, and it um, it might be asking you to log in with your Battle.net account. Go ahead and do that. And when you're done, you should pop up at a screen that looks very similar to the one I have on here in the video. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that most of the screen is taken up by the 3D environment uh, right here. This is the actual map that you'll be creating. Uh, it starts off by giving you a default terrain, which we'll be using to show off some of the basic functionality of the video. However, you can change this terrain by, there is a way over in the left here to change the terrain entirely to a different theme, and you can also just click the new map button and change the theme entirely and make a new map. So. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit, but I also do want to cover the left-hand bar. This is where a lot of the submenus are for you know the, the uh, type of editing, the editing that you'll be doing. Um, up here at the top, we've got terrain, units, doodads, points, etc. So these, uh, this menu over here will change depending on what you have selected both up here. So you see I just selected units, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff that just popped up. And uh, we'll go back to terrain. And... You can see if I change these menus up here up top, the ones down here change as well. So that's the uh, left-hand side, and of course we've got the mini-map up here as well. And you can left-click and drag around the, uh, the camera if you want to. And up here at the top we do have a couple of pretty familiar buttons. New, Open, Save, Undo, Redo. These are very important. You will need to learn these. And as a matter of fact, while I'm talking about Undo and Redo, you're going to want to learn the hot, the hot keys for that. Undo, as you can see by mousing over it, control Z. You'll be doing that a whole bunch. Redo, control Y. You'll be doing that a whole bunch as well. So keep that in mind. First uh, first lesson here. So I'm going to take a look at the rest of the buttons. We do have cut, copy, and paste. That's all pretty familiar to you if you're a decent computer user. And over here we've got terrain, units, doodads, points, regions, cameras, and pathing. So these are all different sections of the map editor that will help you uh, adjust the various aspects of your map as you uh, as you proceed. And then over here we have just a couple different things. We've got uh, edit ways to edit uh, triggers, data, text, import, and we'll we'll deal with that stuff way later on in the tutorial. Overview Manager we will also deal with later on. And Test Document, this is the button that you would click if you have what you think is a playable version of your map, or if you wanted to just test out how something works in particular. Just load up your map, click Test, and you're good to go. It'll load up a, a localized copy of uh, StarCraft II. It won't ask you to connect to Battle.net, it'll just load right into the map. So, let's take a look at the uh, file menu here. We're just going to breeze through these real fast, cover what's, uh, what only really needs to be covered. Uh, these five, first five here should be familiar to you. If not, mess around with it. Dependency is not something you're really going to have to worry about too terribly much when you're creating a melee map, which we'll be doing here in the near future. Publish, this is how you release your map uh, that you've created uh, from your computer to Battle.net. Uh, Publishing it will put it in that list when you've logged on to Battle.net, you know you click multiplayer, join game, you get that big old honking list of games there. That is where your map will be once you've published it. And then manage published, 
pretty self-explanatory. You manage the maps that you published. So convert legacy map, this is actually a really important functionality. Um, this lets you import a map from StarCraft 1 into StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty using kind of a, a best guess system uh, for translating, you know, doodads and terrain, etc. So you mess around with that too if you uh, want to import dire straits or something. I know that was a really fun map. Uh, test document, pretty self-explanatory. Preferences, I'm just going to touch on this for a second and load this up. This is just the preferences for the map editor. It's not actually setting the preferences for the, uh, the for your in-game settings. So you've got video and you can match. You can either match your in-game settings or adjust here as you as you want. Test document. The one thing I want to tell you why are you looking at these preferences. Go ahead and click on test document. Game speed, you're going to want to probably set this to faster. So that way when you load in, it defaults to, I think, normal. Um, so that way when you go to test a document, it'll actually be at the faster setting. So go ahead and set that, and you can set the AI to be whatever you want it to be. You know, just a lot of times when I'm testing melee maps, I'll put a computer down in the melee position opposite from wherever I'm spawning is, uh, and then I'll just set it to a random difficulty and, you know, proceed with testing. So the StarCraft 2 Galaxy Editor does have tablet functionality, as you can see here. So tablet owners rejoice. It's got a couple startup features here. You know, this is uh, really the only one that I mess with. Uh, when it starts up, by default, the Galaxy Editor will load the map that you see behind this window uh, with its default terrain. I prefer for it to be uh, not loaded anything up at all, just because I don't like having that extra map loaded behind whatever I'm working on. And then you've got sounds, and here's the general tab, and you can kind of set the undo limit. So if you want to if you uh, undo a lot, which you probably will, you want to make sure this is as high as possible, and I think it's 256 is the max. So, And you can set the locale if you have any additional ones. I'm not sure how you'd go about getting those, but that may apply to some of you. Fonts, uh, documents, this is actually very important. Make sure you set up an automatic save for every, you know, whatever increment of time that you want to use because you never know when the editor's going to crash. I mean, it's a computer. These things happen. So set up a, uh, you know, every, I've got mine set up for every 15 minutes. I've got mine backing up to a separate hard drive. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can put it to the same hard drive or whatever you want to do. But I just prefer to have that kind of, uh, I guess, off-site uh, save just in case something happens to my C drive altogether. And you can also set limitations as well. So uh, then there's colors, there's camera, and then over here is the default Battle.net account. So if I were to click that, you would see, you know, my Battle.net account and whatnot. So I'm feeling selfish. I'm not going to release that today. Sorry. So I'm just going to click cancel and go on here a little bit more. You got configure controls as well. I'm not really going to look too much into that. Just give you a brief overview. Everything you can do pretty much is hotkeyed, so you can configure it however you want. As you can see, I'm scrolling through a ridiculously long list. Scrolling back up, I will leave that for you to mess with as you see fit. And then down here is the list of recently uh, recently loaded maps. You can see a couple of projects, uh, projects I've been working on, just kind of diddling around. So, edit. There's not really too much that's uh, unfamiliar to most computer users in the edit. You've got undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, clear. Uh, you've also got uh, find and replace. One thing that is actually really helpful is that's the uh, flip and the rotate. Let me actually throw down some terrain here, and I will show you why it is so important. And I will show you later on how to do what I'm doing. So just ignore what I'm doing on the screen, and uh, yeah. Okay, so got this terrain, and I, what I did is I selected the terrain and I copied it using Control C, and now I have the ability to flip horizontally and vertically, and also rotate the terrain. So if I were to paste it in here, you can see if I just paste it, it'll be the same thing as before. But if I paste it, and this is very important, you have to paste the terrain before you can actually use flip and rotate. So paste the terrain, and then we'll say flip it horizontally. And you can see that it was flipped. Paste it again, edit, rotate, 90 degrees clockwise, you can see that the shape, the rectangle has changed, and bam, there you go. So this is uh, this is probably the first big lesson of this tutorial. Generally speaking, you're going to want to have your maps to have some sort of a symmetrical aspect. You want to make sure you're giving each player the equal opportunity um, in comparison to the other players in terms of resources, terrain, etc. So it's really easy to do this 
to achieve this goal by using the copy and flip features of the Galaxy Editor. So uh, just keep that uh, keep that in mind, and of course, if you want to rewind and listen to this again, feel free. These are uh, hopefully some really helpful stuff that I'm going over here. So that's the edit feature. You've got flip and rotate. It's really good. I don't really use um, I don't really use a whole lot of this stuff in here. I think in the edit, I'll really only use uh, flip and rotate. So view, you've got a whole bunch of features that you can view here. And I will let you go through and look at all of them and decide what you want to do. There's a couple that some people might find helpful. Uh, grid, you can put uh, large, and the key, the hotkey for this is G. So this is the large grid. This kind of gives you an, uh, an idea of how, uh, how your terrain looks in response to uh, symmetry and your balance and whatnot. And then you've got the small grid, and you've got no grid at all. So taking a look back at view, you've also got pathing. You can show uh, climbable, unpathable stuff and whatnot. So uh, give that, a, give that a, a minute or two of your time. Check that out. And I'll let you pretty much go over all the other stuff in this part. I do want to cover the camera. This is something you're going to want to use a lot because you're going to want to make sure that you, you know, all the terrain editing, all the balancing you do, you keep it in mind from the, the camera perspective of the player in game. You don't want to have terrain that raises so that way your marine is, you know, literally a foot long on the player's monitor. So you don't want to raise the terrain that high. You also don't want it to be silly that you can't see anything. So in order to get a good perspective on what the player sees on your map, you want to reset to gameplay view, and that is how you look around like this. And of course, you can zoom out to get a, you know, kind of a macro view and get in and, you know, micro your your paintbrushes too, but for now just keep that in mind. It's under view and camera. And you can also view the entire map as well. So then you've got the layers. This is where you can change the different aspects of the map that you are currently working on. You've got terrain, you've got units, you've got doodads, which are kind of the non-interactive units. Um, if you've played my map Infernal Arena, I had a quite a number of doodads on there. Um, I know at each of the rare expansions on the left and the right, it'll have that kind of uh, digger unit job, you know, pulling out the rocks, and then in the middle, it's got the high yield, high yield conveyor belt, stuff like that. That's considered doodads. They're generally non-interactive. Um, you also have points, which you won't really be using that too much. However, you do have these starting locations, and this is what you will need to position, you know, where the player is going to start on a melee map or a use map settings map, either way. So, and that just popped up. Going to get rid of that and go on here. These other three you won't really use too much for melee maps. 